The term people person is used a lot these days, but in the case of Anne Rhodes, it is certainly appropriate. She has built a successful career out of being a people person. From her time as vice president of the people department at Southwest Airlines, to her time as executive vice president at JetBlue, to her human resources consulting firm, People Inc., Ms. Rhodes has always focused on better serving those around her. She studied business at the College of Santa Fe and earned an MBA at the University of New Mexico before beginning a career working to improve the way companies interact with both their own employees and the customers they serve. Ms. Rhodes is also a renowned public speaker with engagements across the country, and we are very happy to have her with us today. It is my pleasure to introduce you to today's commencement speaker, Anne Rhodes. I love seeing your faces out there. And I love the fact that my future is going to be determined by what you all do. Congratulations. I love being here. And I actually, a little known fact, and I have to admit to this, but I was given a scholarship to Fort Lewis when I was um, graduating from high school in Albuquerque. And I had one to UNM. And I never visited Fort Lewis. I took the UNM one because my parents actually, we didn't have the money to pay for my residency. So the scholarship was, did not include, it wasn't a full scholarship. But the first time I saw Fort Lewis, I thought, why did I not come here? I love this college. <laughs> and I mean it. And I love being here today. Um, as I envisioned what I thought I would say to you today, I have to tell you that I was attending a meeting and there was an individual there whose son was graduating from another college. And he said he recently asked his son, so son, now that you're graduating, what job is it that you're going to do? And his son replied, honestly, you know, the job I want, dad, hasn't been created yet. And it speaks to, I think most of the parents here probably think it speaks to his saying, I don't have a job yet. But actually, I think it speaks to all the opportunities you're going to have and the tremendous velocity of change that's going to occur during your careers. I'm jealous. I think you all are so blessed. And I have to tell you that all of you will be afforded great opportunities. For example, my career is centered around Mir Airlines, right? But y'all can work at a spaceport. Or you might even work with drones. In fact, those little drones that are like hummingbirds that they're using in SWAT situations now, or the ones some young man from California called me the other day and said they're actually testing drones being used to deliver tacos in California. Only California. <laughs> As you begin or continue your professional careers, I want to suggest something to you, something that I did not do, but I would suggest you do. And that is that you think about building the most important brand you will ever build, and that's brand me. And I really typically, when we think about brands, I know we think about the ones that we love, like the Apples and the Googles and the Disney and the Nikes, et cetera, et cetera. But we fail to realize, and sometimes we don't spend the time that it takes up front to design our own brand. And we will all have a brand, whether we design it or whether it just happens. So my suggestion is that when you, brand, when you design brand me, that you think of three things. The first thing is that you design it intentionally. You don't just let it happen. And the second is that you do it enthusiastically and with great passion. And I know you all have a lot of passion. <laughs> I can tell. And third and lastly, I would say, make sure you do it to have impact on this wonderful world we live in. The best brands that we have ever built, and I've been um, part of building, um, actually were brands that had a plan. Years ago, 14 years ago to be exact, there were 10 of us that sat in New York, and we decided to build a new airline. Today it's known as JetBlue Airways. But we decided before we did anything else, before we even bought a plane, that we would write the paragraph that was going to be written about us someday in the Wall Street Journal. 14 years later, it's been written about everywhere, and it's a very, very successful brand. 
But the brand, the way they describe it, is exactly the way that we planned that they would describe it. And that's why it's important that you describe your brand. And today we have 14,000 employees around the country, 77 cities, and we also are outside the United States now. We fly to South America and other places. And I can tell you it's because we sat in that room and decided who we would be when we grew up. I want you also to be cognizant of the fact that everything you do, including all the Twitter, Pinterest, Stack Overflow, and or Facebook entries you post, become part of brand you. And be careful. So remember as you begin your career, be intentional about building that a great brand that your family, your friends, and most importantly, you will be proud of. Additionally, as you build your brand, be prepared sometimes to meet those challenges where people will challenge that brand and your values. Shortly after we graduated, my husband and I moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And jobs there were not, um, there weren't very many of them to say the least. They were pretty scarce. And so quickly I found a job there in, in a while at a bank. And I started as a trust analyst. And uh, within a year, I was made an officer of that bank. A bank was then, right after that period of time, was purchased by a large holding company out of California. And a holding company executive called me shortly after, I was, after it was purchased and said he was coming to town to talk to me and wanted to know if I would have dinner with him. I said, sure. We went to dinner, and during that dinner, he asked me what I felt about the leadership of the bank. I told him the truth, and it was, not, it was pretty painful. It was not um, very complimentary. But he also took two of the senior players to dinner and asked them the same question. And they were afraid of retribution, so they did not tell him what they actually thought. So once they came to my office and told me that, I called my husband and told him I was losing my job. And I actually almost cleaned out my desk, but decided to wait a few minutes. Uh, and actually, that afternoon, the senior player who took me to dinner called me and said that he was thanking me for being so honest. And he put in a CEO that, we re he released the CEO that we had and put in a new CEO that became my mentor for 25 years. And I will tell you, I learned very early on not to forsake my values for a title. And I tell you, that's critically important. And it will happen to you at some time in your career. Try writing, I did not do this and I always thought I should have, I wish I had. Try writing the story you want people to write about you someday in Time Magazine or in one of the Fast Company magazines, or in one of your favorite pr professional journals. Try writing it and describe your achievements. In other words, plan your plan. And then it will tell you what to do, and it will be a strategic way to look at who you want to be. I didn't do that, and I wish I had. Margaret Thatcher, the first and only female prime minister of Britain, had a favorite quote that I love. She said, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Secondly, I would suggest that whatever you do, you do it enthusiastically. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of the key ingredients that I have noticed in every single person I've ever admired and the great leaders that I've had the privilege of working with. And I believe enthusiasm precedes success all the time, but they go hand in hand. Whatever position you choose to accept, whatever organizations you join, whatever title you eventually achieve, get excited and enthused about where you are. It will guarantee your success. One of my favorite stories was watching the 2013 NCAA Finals. If you watched them, you know what passion and enthusiasm look like courtside. It's called Kevin Ware. Kevin played for Louisville, but during the semifinals, Kevin ended up with a compounded fracture of the tibia. It was, as one coach said, a horrific sight to see. In the midst of his agony as he lay on the floor, he selfishly said to the coach, I'm okay, just go win the game. The coach then invited the team members over, and Kevin repeated that same statement five times. And the rest is history. Barbara Jordan, one of my personal heroes, and the first African-American congresswoman from Texas, was known for her energy both in public office and as a professor at the University of Texas. And even when she suffered from a debilitating illness, she amazed her colleagues with her enthusiasm and her energy. 
Toward the end of her life, in an interview about her life and accomplishments, a reporter asked her, how can you remain so enthusiastic during these tough times? She said simply, I wake up, I get excited, and then I do the day. Wake up every day, get excited, and continue building brand me. And remember, enthusiasm and desire are what even change mediocrity to excellence. And finally, in my opinion, the only personal brands that are worth building are those that have lasting impact. Your career may include finding a cure for a rare disease, or simply designing a solution for a problem you and others are experiencing. A few months ago, two young men came to see me and asked me to help with their brand, building their brand. When they were in college at MIT, two years prior, they actually were the head, one of them was the head of the debate team. And when he went to make reservations for the debate team to travel, he found out there was no site where he could find both the railway schedules, the bus schedules, and also the airline schedules. And also, he wanted to see if there were places they could rent in cities they traveled to, and there was no site that offered everything on one site. So he built a small company that's called Hipmunk. And that Hipmunk has three million visitors a month today. He just received $20 million in additional financing to build that out, to build that brand out. And you all will go on to do something similar. And I will tell you one of my favorite stories about having impact is a Fort Lewis graduate who is sitting in the audience today. Her name is Lisa Kellogg. She is presently working to complete her master's, but for the last 12 years, she has been the president of Safer New Mexico. Safer New Mexico guarantees that every single person in New Mexico that has a child will get a child, care, a child safety seat. We also do the DWI checkpoints, and Lisa and her team have saved lives for the last 12 years because of the impact they have with that brand on the people of New Mexico. And she is a living example of someone who, as a Fort Lewis graduate, made sure that she built a brand that is recognized, and she is recognized, for integrity, servant leadership, and huge passion. And you all will go on to do that. And I will tell you that um, one of the things that I'm fanatical over is to make and build a brand that really will let people know that you've been here. Make sure that you build a brand with great impact. And also, when you get a chance, play it forward and help Fort, uh, help, um, Fort Lewis. I think as alumni, it is really an opportunity to give back. At every chance you have, please do that. I'm going to close with one of my favorite quotes from Oscar Wilde, who said, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Thank you, and congratulations. Yeah.